Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on the ice. Wayne's World Part 1 edition, of course, brought to you by our good friends at Case Financial, Toby Hockey, Dokes Book Fuels, and the Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy. Wayne, I will say your son now has a better nickname than you. <laughs> yeah. The sure Closer Closer is fantastic. Yeah, it's kind of a unique nickname there. The the local, one of the local media guys in Prince Albert coined him the, the Closer Closer. So, uh, kind of a cool thing. I'm a big fan of nicknames and stuff, and I know the same, uh, maybe the same media guy or one of the play-by-play -play guys also uh, labeled Kale Sanders as Colonel Kale Sanders. So that's a that's a beauty too. Yeah, as long as he maybe one of his sullies could be like licking his fingers as he scores a goal or something. I don't know, or wiping his chin off, or uh, putting up the number eleven for eleven herbs and spices. I'll digress. Nonetheless. Uh, very exciting time still. I mean, it's Christmas, it's holidays, it's, you know, kids are getting ready to get out of school, obviously. But last week we saw the the opening rounds of the U.S. portion of the WHL draft, as well as the draft rankings for the U15s that occurred in the West. Let's get a quick recap of what happened. And the one thing that I'm going to bring up, Wayne, because I'm going to bring this up because our part two guest is going to talk about it as well. 93 players from the CSSHL taken in the first six or seven rounds, 59 of them in the first four. Um, that's a stat that I'm going to say is not alarming, but I'm seeing how the development of CSSHL action at the U15 level is so opportunistic in the West. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, like any stat, it, you got to really dig deeper to understand what it means and stuff. And, you know, I'm admittedly a guy that, uh, you know, I don't feel that young players need to go to academies. I mean, if their family has a financial wherewithal, absolutely. There's the great programs and stuff. And there's a lot of benefits to be offered. But at the end of the day, a lot of these players are great players when they go into these academies. It certainly helps them to get to the next level. But, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think it's the academies that make the difference. And, you know, that's just my own personal opinion for what it is. So for you, I mean, obviously, I never had academies growing up. I mean, they were few and far between. Now we're fast forwarding 25 years. And players, like you said, if they're financially able to do it, then great. But a AAA program out of Alberta, British Columbia, still pretty darn good hockey at that 15-year-old level. And we're seeing some giants, you know, 6'1", 6'2", guys at 15 and we're seeing some young bucks, you know, barely scraping 5'5", five, five, you know, 120 pounds soaking wet, cracking the first round. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it goes to show how, I mean, size is always going to be important, but certainly skill is even more important than size type thing and stuff. And, you know, as far as certainly CSSHL is, is going to dominate just because predominantly that's where the best players are going. Uh, but, you know, I always like to point out uh, an organization here in Saskatchewan, the Saskatoon Blazers, that I think, you know, somewhere in the range of six players of theirs got drafted and a number of them very, very high and stuff. So, you know, there still is lots of great programs out there and stuff. And I hope uh, parents and players realize that, that, uh, you know, you don't always have to go to an academy. And uh, our old scouting line is always, if you're a great player, we'll find you no matter where you play. That is a great scouting line. I will say the one thing you can't teach a young player is instinct. They have it no matter what. They either have it or they don't. But furthermore, and this is something maybe a bit, off a bit of tangent here, Wayne, I want to get your idea on this, is the, you, we mentioned the Blazers program in Saskatchewan, um, the CSSHL programs across the West. Does that make hockey still a very, quote unquote, elitist sport and one that a few can play? Whereas you look at, you know, participating in team sports that aren't as expensive, like soccer or baseball, uh, potentially giving hockey still that number one gateway to say it's here, it's there, but it's also a status. Yeah, regretfully, that's the one sad thing about, you know, high caliber hockey these days. That it is extremely expensive. And I mean, it comes down to ice rentals, expensive travels, expensive hotels are expensive equipments, expensive and stuff. So, you know, that's the one sad part that uh, I guess makes me sad about, you know, the hockey environment today. It's not like in the old days when I grew up. I mean, anybody <clears throat> could make it and could play. Uh, but today, you know, it is a bit of an elitist sport, regretfully. And, you know, I just hope at some point in time 
we find some way to develop support programs and stuff for for those players that have a love for the game that can still participate fully and and leverage those you know athletic skills and that instinct that they have because they're guaranteed as players that are getting missed just because they don't get the opportunity no i don't i hope you know we've got certain programs that have been installed over the last several years to involve participating increased numbers and participating in hockey inside and outdoors so let's see those numbers continue to grow because you'd hate to see someone fall through the cracks speaking of not following through falling through the cracks the world junior hockey champions are but a couple of weeks away literally and team canada has been announced Last week, if you tuned in, we decided to discuss on Connor Bedard's future with the Team Canada crew, and sure enough, his name is on the list. Give me some thoughts on who made the team, Wayne, and whether or not uh, it was any parts of it you find interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, every individual could uh, debate this their own individual way and stuff. Everyone's got an opinion and stuff like that, so this is just mine. I'll throw it into the hat and stuff like that. I mean... Obviously, it's an amazing team that they selected. Uh, incredible players right across the board, including you know 2005 Connor Bedard. I mean, the kid is a special player for 2005. But you know, I go back to my point that I, I mentioned in our last week's show that I'm just not a big fan of going with big time underage players like a Connor Bedard. He's got lots of years to play. This should be primarily a, a 19 year old tournament. Uh, there's lots of great 19-year-old players, 18-year-old players and stuff, and 17-year-old players, you know, that are as good or better than Connor Bedard. And I just like to see those guys, you know, get their chance and stuff. And again, that's nothing against Connor Bedard, but, uh, you know, he'll get his time. Uh, I wish the other guys would get their opportunity. But that being said, I'll get off that rant. And, you know, I mean, the big uh, surprise that I've seen, and I've seen it a lot online on the social media, is Joshua Roy getting passed over. I mean, He's uh, kicking out about a two-point-a-game average in the uh, Quebec Major Junior Hockey League and stuff. So, you know, it's hard to pass a guy like that. But at the end of the day, I have to assume that maybe he didn't show the 200-foot game. And I think that's what you got to show at this uh, hockey can level is you got to play both ends of the rink. And uh, maybe that's just where he missed it. I didn't really see any of the tryouts and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, uh, all look good. I mean, their defense looks stacked. I mean, one gap I did see is that there's no right-handed shots on that team. Uh, defense but there wasn't many right handeds in camp and stuff but I mean you look at a an Owen Power and Caden Goulian behind him and Lucas Cormier and stuff I mean I'd hate to have to play against that D. No it's very solid very big guys uh, all uh, very well respected on the back end uh, Carson Lambos included in that list. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely yeah absolutely. Him as the lone Winnipeg Ice member to make the roster Real quickly on the Connor Bedard situation I mean He's having a lackluster season. Zach Benson is not having a lackluster season. And case in yeah. point, here's an older player that could have given that opportunity or had that opportunity as a hot stick to uh, move on and do something. One thing in particular, Cole Perfetti is on that team as well, but he isn't considered an NHLer. There are no uh, resident NHLers on the team. Several AHLers, a lot of players, of course, drafted in the first round. I don't think everybody's been drafted in the first round because Connor hasn't had his drafts year let, but Correct. certainly a very strong and stacked team. So it should be a great tournament to watch opening up, of course, on Boxing Day against the Czechs, I believe. Uh, do you think we've got gold stacked up or do we have to, you know, we crescendo, we get, we get into the tournament, we start playing, we find out, and then all of a sudden we hit it around game four, game five, and then we start playing in the semis. And that's when we go to shore colors. Yeah, it's it's always hard to say. I mean, obviously, Canada's always one of the favorites going in. But, you know, with the growth in the USA hockey, I mean, they're always uh, they're battling. You know for sure that the Russians are going to be good. I mean, the Finns and Swedes can always be extremely strong and stuff. So this isn't a gimme tournament like it was maybe back in the early days when it you know started and got big in the 80s and stuff like that. So... You know, it, it all comes down to who shows up. I mean, there could be injuries, what goalie gets hot, uh, what forward gets hot. I mean, so it, it's up in the air. But bottom line is, in my opinion, it's the best hockey of the year and always a, a Christmas and holiday tradition around our house. No, certainly. It's one of those sit back, relax, grab the rest of the eggnog mm -hmm. and have her at it. Uh, Gunther, Gooley, uh, Shane Wright, all potentially could be wearing a letter in the upcoming weeks, I think, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Throw Stankoven in there and stuff. I mean, just so many players to choose from. I don't know how they decide. It really is. I mean, it's, and it's a good it's a good problem to have, wouldn't you say, Wayne? Yeah, I think that that would be uh, pretty incredible to to coach that team. And you look at your fourth line, and it's an all star fourth line. Incredible. Yeah. Would you Would you be able to hold yourself behind the bench if you were asked to coach that team, or you'd just be grinning from ear to ear? I'd probably find myself watching the game too much and not really coaching the team. So uh, I don't think that's a job for me. No, I, I would have to pass that one as well. I think it's far too much pressure. Yeah. And I know there's some great people that spend their life, you know, dedicated to coaching Team Canada, the red and white. Let's quickly get into our hot takes. Wayne, the first one we're going to throw at you, it's going to be number one, uh, kind of tying into our first discussion. Any surprises that you saw in the WHL banner draft? Well, you know, surprises is, I don't know if it's the right word or not, but because, uh, you know, these lists, you know, and there's multiple lists that exist out there as far as people kind of projecting where people will go and stuff like that. And they're just so many factors that go into it, including the individual clubs that have unique needs and their geographical region versus where the top players are and stuff like that. So, you know, any big surprises, probably no huge ones that I've seen, but, you know, some of the good picks that I really like that I think players maybe got grabbed either a little bit later than maybe they could have gone uh, or maybe guys went a little bit higher and the guy that jumps out at me right away is a guy that i watched at the subaru classic in regina this uh in august is uh miguel marguez uh lethbridge grabbed him with uh, the 10th pick and that was the pick if people recall that uh, lethbridge got from the regina pats in the trade for zach stringer the 2003 and i you know i specifically wanted to watch that one because i knew uh, the Lethbridge is getting a great pick there. And, you know, of interest, I mean, uh, Marquez got into the game later that night that he was drafted with Lethbridge. They called him right up. And that's the unique situation with this draft happening late is that these players are eligible to play. So that was one. And the other pick that I really liked was uh, Red Deer Rebels jumped and grabbed uh, uh, Ollie Josephson. Uh Probably a little bit higher than he was ranked, but again, it's a player that I've seen at the Subaru Classic in Regina and definitely impressed, and uh, I think they got a great pick there. And the last one I'll mention is that uh, the Brandon Wheat Kings uh, grabbed a good one there in Roger McQueen. It seems like the Wheat Kings have moved to uh, a big body type focus, and that kid is obviously six foot four at that young of age is, is a great pick. And uh, sounds like by the alarm, I ran past my time, but give me your two bits. There we go. Uh, real quick, my real two bits, no big surprises. I think the, like you said, Brandon Weekings uh, taking the 6'4 tower over their local boy, Caswell. I mean, that was a bit of a, you know, struggle. But, I mean, the big thing I noticed was that when it came to the importance of geography, I think it really mattered to a lot of these players and these teams to say, okay, practicality is, you know, one of those intangibles that we haven't discussed really. But, it really is a practical sense when you see teams picking players that have an opportunity to see what it's like to play junior hockey. I mean, I think when you look at it, for example, Jonas Wu, who got picked up by the ice, his father is a part of the organization. I'm pretty sure Jonas has seen several games uh, with the Winnipeg ice in the stands, or he's available to see that. And because he has, that's given him the opportunity to see a little bit of what life is like. And I think if you have that opportunity as a young 15-year-old to do so, and that is the goal you want to do is play in the WHL, go and check it out. Because if you go in there carte blanche, you're going to come out carte noire, and you're going to sit on the sidelines. So Absolutely. there's my two bits real quick. Hot number two, uh, junior hockey trade deadlines. Are they necessary, and who are they good for? The teams, the players, who are the bent? Like, I only look at it this from one standpoint, Wayne, and that's saying, okay, here's the deadline where you can't trade, change your roster going to playoffs. I mean, we understand that the junior hockey system has ebbs and flows. It is a business. We get that. But that is the only thing I really see as a benefit is saying you don't get any more trades. You can't pick anybody else up. This is your roster going to playoffs. Yeah, I agree with you on that, Theo. I mean, you do have to have some sort of a deadline so that players aren't moving around and guys making ridiculous last-minute deals to, to get the championship and stuff. But – you know, again, I, I continue to say this. I'm an old school guy. I still like that players stay with a team and, and can play most of their career with one team. And I wish that was true in the NHL. I wish it was true in the WHL. And I wish it was true in, in junior A. But it's not going to happen because we've gotten into a cycle where, you know, teams 
are going through that three and four year cycle where you build a contender and you, you make a run for it. And then you just, uh, you know, admit that you're going to go two or three years to try and restock the cupboard and stuff like that. And, you know, the concern I have with that is ultimately junior hockey is still a, a ticket based funded uh, program. And, uh, you know, I think you start to lose some of the loyalty of fans when they kind of, you know, have to look at the program to understand who their players are, even though they're season ticket holders and stuff. So, I mean, I think there's something to be said about keeping guys as much as possible, uh, weathering the storm with these players. But there's always going to be those big blue chip trades like we've, we've seen where, you know, the ice acquired uh, Finley and uh, Edmonton acquired Gooley from uh, from PA and stuff like that. And, and that that has to happen. And that's good for both teams. But some of the, you know, medium type trades that are happening, I think just is like tweaking. And, you know, I don't know that it delivers a lot of value to either team. I agree. I mean, it's one of those things, like you said, I mean, you want to, if you know you've got a team that's in the top 10 or the top five, as we have in those three teams that are in WHL in the one, two, three spot, those are the three you're going to watch. Last but not least, our third one for the night before I let you go, Wayne, uh, we saw a Bantam draft for the first time in forever, almost in December, the 06s. Now the 07s are coming up in the, the springtime. Do they benefit now seeing an earlier draft and kind of getting like a bit of a glimpse of what to expect? Because a lot of these players are potentially playing with each other right now in the same teams. What do you think is going to happen in the springtime? Well, I think it's going to be interesting because, you know, with the late draft of the 06s, it allows WHL teams to actually bring these kids up and play right away. So, I mean, a lot of teams will be able to kind of test drive their, their 06 picks and see if they kind of nailed it and got the right guy. And if they have any question marks, they can quickly, you know, go to the 07 class and, and fill a gap that they thought they maybe had filled and then isn't uh, filled. But, you know, it's also going to be interesting, you know, when the 06s and 07s are really going to go to uh, fall camp with all these teams at the same time. So there's going to be an overload of prospects at the camps. And so, you know, uh, it's going to be a great challenge for the 07s uh, going in there. Uh, they can't obviously play uh, this year, but I mean, they're going to be going against that new 06 class. It's going to be uh, just getting their feet wet with the team and stuff. So it'll, it'll make it interesting for sure. I mean, it's a, probably a once, hopefully in a lifetime thing, but uh, will be interesting. I agree. It's one of those things like you're not waiting a full year for mm -hmm. players to come out of not of the next level. But like you said, you know, maybe we kind of missed the mark on that draft pick. Maybe we need to assess this or we have to revisit this. And I mean, it's going to give scouts a tremendous, not heart attack, but it's going to give them <laughs> a little bit of stress where they got to say with the team, okay, you know, we missed on this or we got to work on this. Or, you know, what is our game plan for the next two years? Because you're crescendoing up or you're trying to rebuild. No time than the present to have two drafts within six months of themselves, you know, really to start putting a position and a good place for your team for the future. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be exciting times. And before we know it, we're going to be into another WHL draft here in the in the May time frame. Well, we'll see it in the May, in May time frame. Wayne, thank you very much. I think we'll do one more show before the holidays, before Christmas rolls around. Maybe we'll get your ideas and your sense if you look at world junior teams across the world. How's that sound? That sounds fantastic. I look forward to it, Theo. You have a great week ahead. You as well, Wayne Kozier. Wayne's well here on part one. Part two, Gordy Tomlinson's going to join me from the Pilot Mount Hockey Academy. We're going to talk about the first half of the season of all three teams, plus the importance of setting up that third team, the U15 program, uh, coming up here on the ice. Welcome to Pilot Mount Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mount Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on-ice coaching propel our students to the next level, both mentally and physically, in a professional environment. Re 
dehydrating as always. Gordy Tummelson with the part two edition of On the Ice. Gordy, thanks for taking some time. I guess you and I both didn't get the uh, memo or the invite. <laughs> Tonight's Pilot Mound uh, Christmas season's greetings extravaganza. That's okay. I'm all right with it. Gordy, it's better to chat with you. Perfect. Um, yeah, uh, you and I uh, seem to fit perfectly on this one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I seem to get missing all these uh, nice memos that when there's a party. So uh, I just get to go to work. <laughs> all so. the work we do, Gordy, and this is the thanks we get, right? Rod is going to be go. on our list. Ho, ho, <laughs> ho. All right, Gordy, you've been working with the tenders. You've been watching these teams working tirelessly behind the scenes. Give us a bit of a recap on the first half of the season for the U18 programs, the male and the females. Well, I, I can sum it uh, pretty quickly for all, <clears throat> all three groups. Um, we were hard hit by COVID. Uh, this little town uh, doesn't have a great uh, drawing area. The, the world is kind of the drawing area for players. And unfortunately, you know, the COVID thing just got in the way of everything. So we, we took it on the chin. We got, we got some great, we got great kids here. <clears throat> unfortunately, we just didn't get the cream of the crop in terms of some of the hockey players that we had hoped to get. So all three teams are playing uh, what we would call, you know, a little bit short on the quality side of players. A lot of enthusiasm, great kids, uh, learning lots. <clears throat> so we started the season off and, uh, you know, the, the big schools, uh, big academies just thumped us uh, from and knocked us from pillar to post. Uh, and over the, <clears throat> the four months, <clears throat> as we promised, we'd get better. And we have. And so some of the teams that uh, we've lost to uh, big time, you know, 10, 11, 12, 15 goals uh, in some cases, um, we're now uh, competing with them. And uh, in fact, uh, our U-17s and our our girls uh, U-18 female program, you know, we've, we've beaten some of the, the top teams in, in uh, their particular leagues in the last little while. So <clears throat> um, we're pleased with the progress and uh, uh, lots of work to be done. So the players are getting better. Uh, teams are starting to work is starting to fit in better, and uh, <clears throat> Gordy, how have you been able to uh, continue your work behind the scenes? I mean, we're working, obviously, with ASTV. We're getting the games online, but also we're working with some radio stations in and around Manitoba to show off the program in the academy. How important is that? And catch that one Gordy, can you hear me okay? Actually, I didn't catch the question. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, with the marketing aspect that Gordy, that you're working with, you're not only just didn't targeting. Catch the question, Theo. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm going to repeat it for you real quick. The marketing app, the opportunities you've been creating so far, Gordy, not only uh, working with ASTV. The um, Wi-Fi is not working, maybe, between us. Okay. Can you hear me now okay? Can you hear you now, yep. Okay. Uh, working with ASTV has been a, a blessing, putting all the games online, but also doing some interviews weekly with some stations in and around Manitoba, what does that do for not only the program, but also improving avenues to expose these players to give them better avenues to see their play? Yeah, we've uh, worked really hard in trying to develop a, a, a better recruiting and placement uh, program here on behalf of the players and, of course, their parents and whatnot. Uh, we've got we're involved in Fargo now. Uh, uh, we've got we've got involved with a, a program called Elite Profiles out of um, uh, sort of the Eastern U.S. And, uh, of course, we're, we're connected to – you guys are great. I mean, that's – ASTV is wonderful to us and, and all of that good stuff with lots of shows and lots of coverage. Uh, yeah, and, you know, so we're, we're – <clears throat> it, it just it, – it builds our profile. And uh, ultimately, you know, as we develop players and see them get better at school and, and continue on on that side of things – uh, you know, they're better prepared to leave us when they graduate and play hockey, uh, go to university, uh, play junior A hockey. If they're the boys, the girls get into school right away. <clears throat> it's just better for them all. And, and the more people that know who we are and what we do, um, the, 
the better off our kids are and, and, and their schools and their programs are too, because we, we send them quality people. We don't just send them hockey players or, or whatever. We send them quality people. They've, they've learned something here about community, about growing up, about maturing, about responsibility. <clears throat> All of those things happen because in a small town and small and small organization, everybody pulls their weight and a little bit more. I couldn't agree with you more of the last four or five years working with Pilot Mountain and talking to the players and the coaching staff. The one thing that is you can attest to is the fact that these players may not have had a platform to play such as Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, not opportunity. And once they develop that idea of what a student athlete is supposed to be, that just sets them off into another dimension an opportunity, whether you choose to go with the student athlete environment or go into junior hockey or go play overseas, it's something that they would not have had that experience prior to. Well, absolutely. The, um, <clears throat> it's a special place. Uh, with this, you know, Notre Dame would be in a similar kind of a place. Uh, um, probably um, Prairie, uh, the facility out in Cairnsport, same kind of thing. Um, you know, they're small, small towns. And uh, in our case, you know, it's a, you know, a family runs this thing and we're right, you know, right at the edge of town, right, you know, walking distance to everything. And uh, the, the kids just, uh, you know, have, they have no choice but to kind of fit in somehow. And, and uh, I mean, they, we, we, we don't have many kids from Manitoba. We get most of our players come from somewhere else. We've got a boy from Taiwan. We've got a boy from, from Brussels, Belgium. We've got uh, numbers of players from the, the United States. And of course, every province and territory from Ontario West. And so <clears throat> the connection to other things and other people and other cultures and all of that is, is present here all the time. And so, you know, getting along and fitting in and, and understanding and, and, you know, realizing that uh, the world's a big place and, you know, I'm just one little cog in it and pulling together and getting to get things done. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's, it's a neat environment uh, and not many people, not many kids um, struggle here. This is the odd one, but most uh, most of them get along because it's it's like a big home. And it's all it is is one big home with a lot of brothers and sisters. A lot of people to fall back on, and the support is tremendous, uh, all the way up to you know the PMCI to the coaches, down to your line mates, your teammates, the other teams, uh, even the uh, people in the dorms. I mean. Truly an amazing network of individuals that want to see nothing but success on a team level and on a personal level. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, the only goal we have here is to turn out a better person. And as we do that, uh, they get educated uh, in the school. Uh, as you said, PMCI is a wonderful boy. They, they bend over backwards for our kids to accommodate them uh, because of the travel in special circumstances that all these kids are under, uh, you know, they look after us wonderfully. Our, our dorm staff, uh, the, you know, the shops in town who, who help us out, the physiotherapist here, uh, she's wonderful. She plays uh, the, the games when they're out live and she plays them uh, on uh, on the TV uh, in her in her lobby at her, at her place. I mean, that, that's the kind of support we get here in, in town. So, yep, no, they, it's again. I say it's a special place, and, and there's lots of good things that happen. Uh, and uh, and 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 the folks here uh, really appreciate having uh, you know different people come to their town and enjoy what what goes on here and, and use the facilities and and look after them too. No doubt. You talk about the support. Over the last several years, we've only had, you know, one team on the male and female side. We've now added the U15 program with more to come in the not so distant future. <clears throat> this past week, Gordy, we saw a large group of players selected from the CSSHL for the WHL Bantam draft. Now, the U15 program, obviously brand new, but are we looking to hopefully throw our hat, hat in the ring and say, we should be considered part of this, you know, opportunity for these players to eventually make it to the jump to junior hockey, such as the WHL. Oh, that's that's the um, that's a huge goal for our program and and every program like ours. The, the whole idea of developing a hockey player is they get the ice time, they get some good quality coaching, uh, they get encouragement from every side, they get to play lots of games, they get to play 
games in front of spectators and scouts. Uh, they get to play on TV, internet TV, and uh, and those games, of course, are watched by lots and lots and lots of people, hundreds, thousands, you know, over time, and uh, and of course, everything is archived, so people can go back to them and, and watch again and again. Uh, yeah, the 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 U15 program, our O7s, will, of course, will be in the draft. Uh, we have O7s and O8s this year, so um, you know. I mean, have some old sevens go for sure, and 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 we're part of it, and and you'll see. I think we we could have as many. Last question before I let you get out of here, Gordy. Before you get to join the teams, of course. Any projections for the second half of the season? I know we want to see better hockey. I know we want to see uh, closer scores, but obviously we are getting better on a weekly basis. Yeah, I mean, you, you summed it up there nicely. Uh, better scores, closer games, uh, more wins, uh, you know, more timely saves by the goalies, more timely goals by our forwards and defensemen, more timely defensive plays by our people uh, on, the, on the ice. Uh, yeah, the, the, the whole thing's getting better. It's gotten better and it will continue. And you know, of course we would look forward to, you know, we, we're, we're sort of at the bottom or, you know, the middle to bottom on the three, three teams in terms of our division. So we're in the upset position now we can upset some people, maybe throw, uh, throw some, uh, a wrench into some, some of those, uh, upper teams, uh, ideas of, of, you know, winning a championship. We may be able to take it away from them. So we're, you know that's that's the kind of thing we're hoping for, and and uh, and we work, uh, and our coaches and our players work really hard every day to to get there. We've seen the, some improvement. We'll see more. This little break we're going to have now at Christmas is going to help us. Uh, the kids will come back, uh, get their timing back uh, in a couple of weeks, and then uh, who knows? You know we might uh, just do that upset thing as as the uh, playoffs come around. Gordy, I look forward to seeing the results. Of course, coming January, and all the teams are on break right now. Have a great holiday season, Gordy. Merry Christmas. Uh, enjoy the time off and uh, enjoy getting a little bit of rest before the craziness of January comes back. It is TV. Right. Gordy, thank you very much for joining me. This has been On the Ice with Gordy Tomlinson, marketing guru, goaltending coach i mean you're gonna have some fun conversations some of the boys are going home i'm sure for the break they'll have some stories to tell you and uh, we look forward to hearing those in the new year as well gordy perfect thanks Theo. as Very always Christmas. thanks for watching here on the ice brought to you by of course our friends at dokes book fuel case financial group toby hockey and the pilot mount hockey academy we'll be back tuesdays and thursdays as always here on ASTV, bringing more goodness to the greatness take care of yourselves take care of your neighbors take care of one another and we'll see you next time thanks for watching Bye-bye for now.